Next tonight, the mother of EMT, Timothy McCormick, Indianapolis EMS. Last call, February 16th, 2013. Mrs. Rosemary McCormick. Good evening. Um, I would like to tell you a little bit tonight about how Supporting Heroes has personally helped. You've heard what their mission statement is, to honor the service and sacrifice of the public safety heroes who die in the line of duty by taking care of the loved ones they leave behind. Well, my family and I, we were some of those people. You think your life is perfect, and in a second, everything changes. Two years ago, on a February morning, a Saturday morning, bitter cold, my daughter came to me and said, Mom, there's two policemen at the door. Of course, Indianapolis PD called, NYPD, and they came. I didn't know what was going on, what they were going to say to me. And what they said was, do you have a son named Timothy McCormick who works in Indianapolis? They didn't have to say anything else. I knew. In that moment, our world crashed. His father and I, he, Tim left a brother and two sisters. We didn't know what to do, what to think, what to say, who to talk to. They gave me a number to call Tom Arkin at IMS, and he told me what had happened to my son. Our hearts were broken. But at the end of this conversation, Tom said to me, I've given your contact information to a man named Eric Johnson from Supporting Heroes. He's going to call and he's going to help you. At a time when I didn't even know what help to ask for or what was possible. And the next phone call did come from Eric. And when we spoke, he told me that he would help us with all of the arrangements, five of us in the family, we had four children, and for the last 10 years, we have had one or two at the same time in college. And I never in a million years thought I would have to save for the funeral of my son. And I think if I opened my checkbook that day, there was about $200 in it. And that wasn't going to be enough to take our family out to Indiana. But it was all taken care of, and more even than the financial support of buying those tickets, and we were also, through the kindness of supporting heroes put up in our hotel, was the idea that someone else could think for me at a time when I didn't even know what to think or what to do or what we did next. We had that conversation, and Eric took care of all the arrangements and said he would meet us at the hotel and we would talk more. And I said, well, how will I know you? <laughs> and he said to me, Rosemary, you won't have any trouble recognizing me. I'm seven feet tall. <laughs> but that was only the beginning. And there was a conversation with another official. And I had one of the lowest moments of the week. And I said, well, what now? What are the arrangements for bringing Tim home? Because we buried him home in New York with the family that we could be there and visit. And this official said to me, we don't do that. I assumed I was naive, but I was shocked. And I was at a loss. And I just turned and Eric was next to me. I just put up a hand just to signal to me that I didn't even have to speak. And he answered those four words with two of his own. And he said, it's done. Supporting Heroes brought my son home. I'll never forget that kindness. And I thought that was the end of our relationship. We had received this great gift. It was only the beginning. They paid for our family to fly out and put us up in hotels. It's June at the National EMS Memorial Service. 
those were the big and the huge things, but there have been countless little items and kindnesses, from the Christmas cards to the text messages just to see how we're doing. All of these small kindnesses that have touched our hearts. I am so thankful to be here tonight to have the personal opportunity to thank you on behalf of my family, my husband and I, Tim's brother, his two sisters, for everything that you did for us. We will never forget it. When the world fell out from underneath us and my family was in free fall, yours were the arms that caught us. Thank you so much.